At some point during your Excel spreadsheets building and editing and controlling, you will need to be able to wrap the contents of cells and then merge the contents of others. If we take our sales data B file, you'll see in the January sheet that our headings are slightly different. We have cars sold dollars, planes sold dollars, bikes sold dollars, and total sold dollars. Now, because these columns are then being widened to fit the new text, they're a little too wide. What we'd really like is if the columns were a bit narrower, but the text somehow tidied itself up at the top. Now that can be achieved if we just narrow the column, however, so if I take column B and narrow that about there, you can see it only says car so. The text is still there, car sold dollars is actually in the cell, but because there's something in the next cell, it goes behind. Now there is a way of displaying that on the screen without it going behind, and that is to actually tell the cell to wrap its text. And we simply do that on the home ribbon using the wrap text icon, which is in the alignment group, and this top right hand icon here, wrap text. And when we click, it applies itself to the cell we are currently on. So it's therefore wrapped car sold. Now we could do exactly the same with the other three. So if we take them and just narrow them up slightly. So you can see that even though car sold dollars has caused row one to go higher, these cells do not automatically wrap to fit that new height. We have to tell them. So I can tell them all together. I select the cells as we've done previously. All we're doing is affecting the formatting. So I select those three cells and choose the wrap text option. And you see that each of them then wraps. And we get car sold dollars, plane sold dollars, bike sold dollars, total sold dollars. Now you have no control over the wrapping where it takes place effectively, in that it will only do it really at a gap. Although if you have a long word, it will wrap the word itself. But it's the gaps that it looks for to make the wrapping look tidy. What you might want to do sometimes though is actually force a wrap. So I've got car sold dollars there, and actually like the dollar below the car sold. I can achieve that by putting a break within the cell. So if I go into car sold and go just before the dollar, I can then, instead of pressing enter, which I know will effectively accept the contents and drop me out of the cell, like so, I'll go back in. If I do alt and enter, it puts a line break within the cell. And then I can press a normal enter, and you can see that car sold dollar is now being forced onto its own line. So although I told the cell to wrap, that's not necessarily going to pull that dollar around on its own. I've had to use a forced line break. And I can do exactly the same with plain sold, so just in front of the dollar, alt enter. And the same for the bikes dollar, make sure the cursor's in front of the dollar, alt enter. And the same for our total sold dollar, alt enter before the dollar, and the dollar is forced onto a new line, regardless of any instructions for the rest of the cell. Even if that cell was not told to wrap, the dollar would still go onto a new line within the cell. So that's a forced wrapping that you can do yourself using the Alt Enter within a cell to say from this point forwards, effectively start a new line. Or we can turn on the wrap option, which is up here, which tells the cell to wrap itself around the new width. So it can't run out of the right hand side, it has to stay within the cell, which will always force the height to go larger. So you have to be a little bit careful that that's what you're trying to achieve, that there will be a higher row. Now merging cells is slightly different. This will allow us to merge a number of cells and for that cell to then act as one cell. It's quite useful for headings. So if I were to insert a row here, I get a new row above and I might want to put a heading in here. Now although I've typed that in A1, the contents remain in A1. What I'd like that is a little heading across the top. So I highlight A1, B1, C1, D1 and E1. That's all of the cells across the top here. And I come to this little icon, which is just below the wrap text one. It's actually going to carry out two jobs. It's merge and center. So it will merge the cells I've got selected. So that's five cells. And then center the contents. So one click there, merges those five cells and centers the contents. This is now effectively one cell as far as Excel is concerned. So I only need to be in that one cell and I can do a little bit of formatting so that we get a little heading across the top. So that's merge and center. You have to be a little bit careful using it across multiple cells where there are contents in two cells. If, for example, I were to try it here, so let's have January in there, and then 2012 in there, and I highlight across. So I've got five cells selected. I then go to merge and center. It says merging cells only keeps the upper left cell value and discards the other values. So I'm going to lose 
that 2012. It will merge all the cells together, but not their contents. So when I say OK, I'm left with January as a merged cell across the lot and the other cell contents disappear. So be a little bit careful when using it, but it's great for headings because it means the heading will then always sit across the top of your cells. Instead of you trying to plan where to type this so it looks like it's in the middle, now I know January cells for Inc Corp is actually across the middle of all five cells. And I've achieved that by merging the cell contents. Now you can unmerge a cell, go into a merged cell as we have there, and just go back to that same icon, and it unmerges the cells Obviously, it doesn't return the 2012 because it didn't know that it got rid of it. That's something that happened in the past and that's forgotten. But it takes the current contents that are in the merge cell and places them in the left hand cell. So we have merge and center, and then we have the wrapping option, which is an option for a cell for it to wrap its own contents. But we do have the force a new line option, which is alt and enter when you're within a cell.